All right, welcome to uh, Module 7, uh, Lesson 1, Part 1. So the next concept we're going to talk about is, I would say, a very powerful concept inside of ACI, and I would say it's one of the bigger benefits to ACI. And it, it, We're going to talk about application profiles, but more importantly, we're also going to talk about something called endpoint groups. All right, so let's before we talk about endpoint groups and what application profiles are, uh, let's kind of just talk about how your typical application gets deployed. So your typical application is going to get deployed in what's referred to as three tiers. Uh, and so the way it works is your typical three tier application, uh, you're going to have end users that leverage the network to access what is the first tier of the application, and that's going to be the web servers. And then the second tier, so behind that set of web servers, might be other servers that are called app servers. And then your third tier would be the actual database servers. So an example that you could use for a specific application might be Exchange. So uh, the end users, when they interact with email, they might access Outlook web access servers. Uh, but however, the application is actually running on a different set of servers. And then there's a different set of servers that are actually running the Exchange database. So this is an example of a three-tier application. Uh, and one of the powerful things that we can do in ACI is we put, or I, I shouldn't even say we can do, you have to do, is you put devices are placed into what are called something called endpoint groups. So notice here, maybe I have Outlook web access servers that are all in one endpoint group. And then the application servers are running it in, in a different endpoint group. And then our database servers are running in a third endpoint group. So notice that devices that have a similar networking config or a similar, similar policy. And when I say policy, think of like rules or configuration. So they have a similar networking configure policy. So I'm gonna put those devices into the same EPG. Now this concept of grouping like devices into the same endpoint group is incredibly powerful. And let's think about it for a second. Before ACI and before endpoint groups, nodes were kind of managed individually. So nodes might be spread all over the network and maybe you try to group them together by being in the same subnet, but still, they're still somewhat managed individually and it really becomes difficult to enforce certain rules to different types of devices. It, it can be tricky. So in ACI, everything's managed in a group called an endpoint group. So again, policy, you think of rules. And the cool thing is that when we use endpoint groups, policy is applied to, never to individual endpoints in ACI, it's always going to be applied to the EPG. So notice here, I can easily apply policy to an EPG. Now some examples of policies I would want to maybe apply to the EPG are certain security policies, uh, who these devices in the web EPG can or can't communicate with. Uh, maybe I want them to go through a firewall. Uh, you know, maybe I want to have a certain QS config for those devices in the web EPG, or maybe I want to send their traffic through some kind of load balancer. So think about the power of this. I can enforce policy in mass across all these devices in the same group. And I would say even more importantly than policy configuration in mass is consistency. All these devices that are part of the same EPG from a policy perspective will be consistent. All right, so hopefully you kind of have an idea of what EPGs are. So endpoint groups, you can also shorten them, abbreviate them and call them EPGs. Um, but let's talk a little bit more about the specifics. So there's different types of endpoint groups. All right, so notice behind LEAF 101, Interface 1.1 is a bare metal server. So since there's a bare metal server behind this interface, we're going to put that bare metal server into what's called an application endpoint group. 
And this is also going to be applicable for, you know, virtual machines, bare metal servers that I mentioned, uh, will be placed into what are called application endpoint groups. Uh, notice here, this is a little different. So Leaf 101 is going to, has a layer two connection going to an external traditional switch. So since it's a layer two connection, this is gonna be called a layer two out external endpoint group. Uh, the third type of endpoint group is, notice instead of layer two, we have a layer three link between our leaf and the 7K. So this is gonna be referred to as L3 out, an L3 out ex external endpoint group. And then the last endpoint group we have is something called the management endpoint group. So if our out-of-band management interface is going to a 3750, this traffic coming into the out-of-band management interface uh, will be placed in something called a management endpoint group. Now in this lecture, we're gonna focus on application endpoint groups. So that are, that, those are gonna be the endpoint groups that our bare metal servers and virtual machines are placed into. Now this is, again, I mentioned this before. So devices, when they're using the ACI fabric, the traffic needs to be placed into an endpoint group. So maybe this bare metal server traffic, maybe if it's coming from like the exchange application server, I wanna, be, I wanna put that into a certain EPG. So maybe I put it into the app EPG. Or if I have a database server, maybe that traffic goes into, instead of the app EPG, will be a member of the database EPG. But traffic coming into the ACI fabric will, will be placed, it has to be placed into an endpoint group. So we have a problem we have to overcome. So if this server sends traffic to this leaf switch here, the leaf switch needs to know, figure out, hey, this traffic's coming in, what EPG is this traffic a member of? So leaf switch 101 needs to determine which endpoint group this server's in. So that takes us to this slide. And notice here we have this detective, he's smoking a pipe, he's looking through his magnifying glass. Uh, you can see his eye there, it's a little big. Maybe he's zoning in on something, really zooming in, inspecting something. Well, I want you to pretend this dude, this guy, this I guess this detective, he's a leaf switch. And he's a leaf switch and this is, his, this is the port on the leaf. And he's using his magnifying glass this server sending a frame. So he's sending a frame and you know, frame to have all these different headers on top of it. So this guy, he is going to inspect the contents inside of the frame and think about those different headers and different addresses and IDs. So he's going to inspect that frame and that's gonna give him a clue as to which EPG this traffic should be placed in when this server is sending traffic to this guy. So a uh, question for you, and again, feel free to pause this video to think about it. So when this guy is inspecting this frame that was sent from the southbound server, what IDs or addresses do you think he might use to identify which EPG this traffic is coming from? So maybe you said certain things like source IP, destination IP, source MAC, destination MAC, maybe the VLAN ID, maybe the port number. So if you said any of those things, you're all right. Everybody, all those answers are potentially right. You actually have a lot of flexibility when you want to identify traffic into a certain EPG. So there's many different ways, we'll talk about those different ways, but the most common way to do it is to use the VLAN ID. So let's go through some examples here. Notice that, uh, you know, for in our upcoming example, the web EPG is going to use VLAN 10 on the wire. So if traffic comes into a certain port on VLAN 10, that leaf switch will say, oh, this traffic is part of the web EPG. Uh, the app EPG is using VLAN 20, and the database EPG is using VLAN 30. So, 
Notice we have maybe a device that's in the web EPG. Uh, when it sends traffic, let's say it's connected to port 11 on leaf 101. When traffic come, was ingressing in to this leaf switch right here, anything that comes in on VLAN 10 will be placed into the web EPG. So we're using the, the ingress leaf switch, the ingress port, and the VLAN ID. So this is the web EPG. Now, maybe I have a different device that's on the app EPG, and they're using VLAN 20. So maybe that app server is connected to a different port on Leaf 101. Notice here, interface 12, Leaf 101. Uh, and maybe that traffic comes in on VLAN 20. So the leaf switch is going to say, oh, this traffic is going to be placed into the app EPG. And then last but not least, we have the database EPG that's using VLAN 30. Maybe there's a bare metal server connected to a different interface on leaf 101. Traffic comes in on VLAN 30. Bam, the leaf switch will say, okay, this is traffic is part of the database EPG. So really there's, and it depends on the parameters you use, but in this example, the leaf switch is going to determine the which EPG the traffic should be placed in by looking by the you know the which leaf switch it's coming into, the interface it's coming into, and which VLAN ID is being used. So that's one way that you can figure out you know which traffic will go into a certain EPG is by referencing the VLAN ID and the traffic can be tagged or untagged on the wire here, right? Because you could set VLAN 30 uh, as an access VLAN or set it native. And we'll, we'll talk about that configuration a little bit later on. Now, we, we looked at examples of using the VLAN ID to figure out which EPG uh, that traffic should be placed in, but there's other options. So you can use, if you're doing VXLAN all the way down for maybe from you know uh, your hypervisor, you can use the VXLAN ID instead of the VLAN ID or the NVGRE as well. Um, this is a little different. So what they're talking about in our example, we looked at bare metal servers. You can also integrate with VMware. Um, this is a little different and this topologies or this diagram I should say is a little confusing. I would say it's upside down almost at least in you know, in my head, I think it should be turned the other way around. But these are the physical adapters. These are like the uplinks on the server. So these would be going, you know, up to like the leaf switches in the ACI fabric, if that was our hypervisor. Uh, and so what they're showing you here is what you can do is when you integrate with uh, VMware from the APIC, you create EPGs and that gets pushed out as port groups. Uh, on the different uh, ESXi host. And a VLAN ID dynamically gets assigned out to these port groups. So maybe we use VLAN 10 here, the APIC dynamically assigns it out, and VLAN 20 here. So if a VM on the web port group sends traffic out its uplink to the leaf switch, the traffic will be tagged on VLAN 10. So the leaf switch will say, oh, this traffic is member of the web EPG. And then if a virtual machine on the DB EPG sends traffic up to the leaf, it's going to be tagged with a different VLAN ID, VLAN 20 instead, instead of VLAN 10. And so when the leaf switch, it might receive it on that same interface, receives the traffic, it'll say, oh, this is tagged for VLAN 20. Uh, this traffic is member of the DB EPG. So in this example, it's still VLAN based. Uh, the difference is, is the VLAN IDs are dynamically getting pushed out to the port groups in VMware. Uh, you can also do it, so you can identify traffic into a certain EPG by referencing the source IP uh, or determining which subnet that device is in. So this is a little different. We'll talk more about this in a later lecture. What they're showing you here is if you're setting up um, external communication. So this is our ACI fabric right here. And what you can do is connect via layer three to an outside network. Uh, this is called layer three out right here. And notice here I have 
two different external subnets. I have the 10.10.10 subnet and the 10.10.11.x subnet. So that would be slash 24 for both of these. Well, maybe I want to treat this traffic differently when it comes into the ACI fabric. So what you can do is you can create two different EPGs in the ACI fabric. Uh, anything sourced from the 10.10.10 subnet will be placed maybe into the production external EPG. Anything sourced from the 1010.11 subnet will be placed into a different external EPG, maybe the dev external EPG. So those are a few things that you can do to place traffic in certain endpoint groups. Uh, there's some other options you have. So you can do like source IP or source subnet. Actually, we just talked about that. Uh, source MAC address of a device can be, you can place it in a certain EPG. Uh, the DNS name of a device. Uh, you can also use different uh, VM attributes as well. So if you look on the actual virtual machine, there's all these different attributes within that virtual machine. All right, uh, that's all we have uh, for this part of the lecture. In the next part of the lecture, we'll talk a little bit about configuring application profiles and endpoint groups.